Check the description for the following discount codes. Well, this is a video that I didn't think I'd be making about the Pico 4. After my positive experiences and my positive review, my positive fit, or mostly positive, obviously there was a couple of negatives with the streaming assistant being particularly poor, um, and obviously the, the light leakage around the facial interface, which I'm hoping will be cured by a VR cover facial interface. Aside from that, I didn't really have much in the way of complaints, and I recommend the headset to people if you haven't got a Quest 2 and you want a standalone one, it's a perfectly decent headset, especially for wireless PC VR. This is my go-to choice of headset. So why have I asked if you're returning your Pico 4? And more importantly, why are lots of people, so it seems, returning their Pico 4s? So throughout the comments on my videos, and then having a look at the Amazon reviews, there are a lot of people returning these either because of faults or because they're unhappy with the way the games in the Pico store are being they're like almost cut down versions of what you get on the Quest 2. You know, the identical game, for example. So DLC isn't available. The game is like the very earliest version of the game that's been updated lots of times since on the Quest 2. And I don't, I don't really use this for standalone. Um, the only things I used to use my Quest 2 for standalone for were big screen, um, 11 table tennis, and uh, walkabout mini golf. Now, I, I mostly play PC VR because obviously everything looks so much better. So when I loaded up walkabout mini golf, it looks noticeably worse than the Quest 2 version. If I was to guess, I would say it's being rendered at a lower resolution. It looks pixely and blocky. Um, and again, the DLC's missing at the time of recording this video. So I can definitely agree with some of those commenters that have said about things just looking way worse standalone wise than what they do on the Quest 2. But I don't have a big Quest 2 library of Quest 2 native games. I don't play standalone VR because I've got, you know, a, a more than capable VR PC. I will always get the PC versions of everything because they look so much better. But in the one title that I was able to do a back-to-back -back comparison with, it did look noticeably worse. I mean, really quite bad. So I don't know why this is, because if the developers are porting them over, you know, this is higher resolution than the Quest 2. It has more memory, and I think the CPU even runs a tiny bit quicker. So there's no reason that I'm aware of, I mean, obviously I don't know everything, I didn't make them, why you would run native Quest 2 titles at a lower quality and resolution on the Pico 4 it doesn't make any sense. But that was just one of the complaints that I'm seeing in the comments and on the Amazon reviews here. And I'm going to go through the list of complaints. I've, I've sort of written them all down in a text document here. And then we'll talk about them and, and I'll tell you whether I've experienced them or not. Um, but just to start off with, looking at the Amazon reviews, 26% of the reviews are one or two star. 26%, that is bad um, for any product. And there's a lot of these you know, reviews saying, I'm returning it, I've returned it, you know, blah, blah, blah. So let me know in the comments here, have you bought one, have you returned it? Because I've seen it in comments on my previous videos that some of you have. So those of you seeing this video for the first time that maybe didn't see my reviews, share your experience here of your Pico 4 have you bought one? Have you had to return it? And is it because of any of the issues I'm about to list off here? Uh, and if it's not, then tell us what your issues were, because this video can form a useful resource for prospective buyers, you know, to know what to look out for. And also a little bit of advice from me right at the end here to try and um, prevent you having too much of a bad experience if you do get, you know, one that's got issues. But um, yeah, 26% of reviews, one and two stars. Five star reviews, 57%. That is very, very low if you look at other products on Amazon. I don't mean cheap crap. I mean stuff that would, what you would expect to be good and get good reviews. And then your four star and your three star is at eight and 9%. So it's 
almost more bad than it is good. It's only 7% in the favour of the, of the positive, really, because even the four and three star reviews are not the best reviews. Even some of the five star reviews, in fact, one of the guys says, in fact, this is a four star review. He says, if you've researched a product, you know the sort of phrase is subpar compared to Oculus. Uh, so I'm not gonna to talk too much about that. And you know, the, the software store is low as well. So, you know, even, the good reviews are not the best. I might put up a little screenshot of that for you as I was speaking or, or I might do it now. But anyway, let's go through the list of the problems that I'm seeing in the comments on my videos and from some of these Amazon reviews. And then I'll just give you my experience as to whether I've had any of these as well. So the first one in my list is that the tracking of the headset itself is a bit wobbly and you get some warping and objects kind of moving around the room with you and what that means is like the headset hasn't you're not moving within the environment anymore the environment is coming around with you like you're you and the environment are locked as one and as you rotate the whole lot's moving with you now i've not had that happen but i have had it happen throughout my vr life when things have crashed and it kind of fixes itself in position, but the, the head tracking is still functioning and it moves the whole environment with you fixed as one. So I knew exactly what the commenter meant when he said about it, because I've had it before, but I haven't had that with my Pico and I haven't had any sort of wobbly head tracking or warping, um, you know, like in a static environment, like maybe the Steam VR home or the Pico home, in fact, you know, it should you you should be smoothly moving around inside that environment. It shouldn't be distorting or wobbly, and it certainly shouldn't be moving around with you. Um, screen door effect. Somebody said they returned one because the screen door effect was horribly noticeable. Now, this has a really high-res panel, um, and it's you know RGB LED display. The, the screen door effect is basically unnoticeable in day-to-day -day use unless you particularly look for it on a plain white background. So all I can think of there is that perhaps there was a fault with the guy's panel itself. Maybe, I don't know, pixel spacing, pixel density was wrong. And my my first thought about this is, is your typical Chinese quality control, you know, and we're going to see, we're going to see this QC issue, I think, cropping up as I go down my list here, because typically with Chinese designed, branded and manufactured products, there are huge quality control issues. You can buy some stuff like unit A will be perfectly fine with no issues upon delivery. Unit B, a list of 10 things wrong with it. I'm not just talking about VR headsets, I'm talking about products in general, whether it be a toilet seat, uh, a, a mobile phone, um, you know, a, a power inverter, wh whatever it might be. Some stuff seems to be okay, and, and other stuff just seems to be absolutely terrible, and you wonder how it even got shipped out to you. But this is what I'm going to call stereotypical Chinese quality control, where at the factory, because a lot of stuff's made in China, um, but some of the biggest differences between like branded items that we'll buy that were made in China and that aren't that design. So let's say you buy some Nike products, for example, they may well be made in China, a pair of Nike Air Max, but because it's Nike that is the, the owner of the brand, they ensure their quality control standards are set really high. And so there'll be a lot of rejected uh, stock. Whereas what I tend to see, and others may agree with me here or may not, with Chinese designed, branded and manufactured stuff, their QC levels seem to be way down and you get a lot more of, of the stuff that, that shouldn't really have ever come out of the factory shipped out to people. It's almost like they run on a percentage-based scenario here whereby we'll send everything out and we'll get only a small amount come back because some people just won't be bothered about it. Some people will live with the issues and they end up just winning in the end anyway and they don't really care. So yeah, screen door effect, I'm gonna guess he had a faulty panel, because um, there's no other explanation for it. It's a high-res headset. Um, what else we got? Units arriving, I see two comments from people saying their, their headsets arrive with scratches on the lenses. And one of them had speculated that someone had been wearing glasses inside the headset, and that's how it had got scratched. Um, and perhaps it had been returned, repackaged up, and sent out to them as new. Again, depending where you got it from, perhaps this is possible, 
but I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, ultimately, I suppose everything goes back to Pico. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how this sort of thing works. If it all goes back to Pico, then Pico could quite happily just go, no, that's all right, put it in a box and send it off to someone else. But then they haven't been out that long, so probably not enough time for that to have happened going to, to China and back. But yeah, scratched, scratched lenses. But again, that could just be indicative of a low level of quality control, whereby someone hasn't properly inspected the lenses to notice the scratches. Um, then, and this is something I've seen quite common in the comments and on Amazon, not turning on beyond the Pico logo showing up. So you've charged it up, you power it on, Pico appears in your headset, and it either just sits there with Pico on display, or it's cycling black Pico, black Pico, something that seems to be cropping up a few times um, in the comments and on Amazon as well. And then alongside that, their headsets are locking up or freezing, and I had this happen once, and I mentioned it in my first review, I haven't had it happen since, and having to do a, a restart because of that. Now, that could either just be the software isn't the most refined, and we know it isn't because things like the streaming assistant works like utter crap. Um, and as we go through this sort of software and the options within the Pico environment, it's very much a copy of the, the Quest 2 environment. There's grammatical errors and it isn't as polished and as refined. So it could just be software issue that's causing the hanging, the hanging or the locking up, but it could also be, again, hardware quality control. It may be that Pico, when they specify their RAM chips or their XR2 processors, there's, there's always a, like a, a yield figure for anything that's produced, whereby you might get like 80% yield, 90% yield. If something has a particularly high failure rate, 50% yield. So half of every one made is thrown away. It may be that Pico are happy to take like seconds almost, or ones that don't quite make the grade. Uh, compared to say what Oculus or Meta would have done for their Quest 2 because I've never had my Quest lock up. And normally it runs Android, which is what mobile phones run if you've got an Android phone. And even these can lock up from time to time. Um, but again, is that QC or is it software? Could be either, just, just speculation there. Uh, and now we go on to dead pixels. I'm seeing lots of comments about dead pixels. One guy even said he's had five of these now and they all had dead pixels. I've not noticed any dead pixels on mine. Um, I've also not had mine arrive with scratches on it. There was no marks, it was fine. Um, is this again quality control? You know, the yield figures for the panels. Are they, have they got a bigger tolerance? They're letting units come out with dead pixels. I mean, they must be letting units come out with dead pixels because they're coming out with dead pixels and people are returning them. Um, again, it's just such a shame that this sort of level of QC exists because this video is gonna put people off buying a Pico 4 because of all the things I'm listing off. You're gonna think, wow, that's a terrible experience. And yet the one I actually have here in my hand has none of those problems that I've listed off here yet, apart from you know the software library only having like the base versions of games and some titles apparently running in a lower resolution than what perhaps they should do. Um, what we got after this? Someone said they had bad lens glare, like most noticeable when the Pico logo, you know, starts up at the beginning, down the middle of the screens. Now, and he said it isn't light leakage from around the sides, because when I put this on, I get huge light leakage from either side, and it manifests itself as very strong reflections, top to bottom, vertically, across the screens. Uh, but he specifically said it isn't that, he has no light leakage, he says there's just bad glare on particular portions of both lenses. Now, again, are we thinking faulty panel, faulty lenses? Is it light leakage and he just hasn't realized? I mean, perhaps the guy hasn't turned the lights off in the room to check, perhaps he should try that. But if it is the case, I don't know, it's either lenses or, or panel problems, again, one, one or the other. Uh, and then this is a slightly weird one, but this may, this next one, may tie into the very first one I mentioned about tracking not being uh, on point and as accurate as it should be and things getting a bit warped and a bit wobbly. I've seen a few comments from people 
Uh, and these are not new VR users, because that would be an explanation for what I'm about to say. These are people that have already got Quest 2s and other VR headsets. They've said that after about 10 minutes of use, they're starting to get dizziness and almost a bit motion sickness or nausea. Like something's just a little bit off in the way the environment they're in is being rendered or the way the movement is being tracked. Now again, I've not experienced this, I've had no problems, and I am prone to motion sickness, but I've got used to it over the years for using VR, and I'm okay with it. So I've not noticed um, this sort of dizzy feeling or, or motion sick feeling, just like I've not noticed any wobbly tracking or warping or objects moving around with the headset. Again, that could be a hardware problem, it could be a software problem, I just don't know. But all the things I've picked up on here, I've had at least a couple of times in the comments or on Amazon. Because obviously if one person says, oh, my headset does so and so and so and so, it doesn't really carry a lot of weight. When you see two or three or four or five people all saying the same thing, you know, there's obviously a bit of a, a theme or a pattern going on here where things just aren't as they should be. So yeah, that's an interesting one. And then this one really got me, bad edge to edge clarity and an overall blurry image as if there's like no sweet spot. And I thought, wow, considering the edge to edge clarity on these pancake lenses is brilliant and the sweet spot is large, for him to be experiencing, again, this isn't a new VR user, it's someone that, that, that had a Quest 2 and a, and a, a G2 as well, I think it was. Um, you know, and the G2 has a tiny sweet spot, so you'd really notice the difference. But yeah, poor edge to edge clarity. So what, what's that then? Just, just QC on the lenses again, I guess. Um, but just, it's such a shame because my headset here is excellent and I have no issues with it aside from my light leakage, you know, from this facial interface that's not designed for Western faces. Um, everything else works just fine. You know, but as in my review, I did say that it does feel slightly cheaper plastics than say the Quest 2. And I, I particularly demonstrated where the seam around my left controller doesn't fit properly and it's all squeaky and cracky and yet my right hand controller, the seams are, are flawless, there's no gaps. Oh, actually that one started to, it's not as bad as the left one, but this one no, so has some use now. This one's now started to creak as well, but not as bad as the left one, no, not even close. And this has done it out of the box again. Two, two controllers in one box, one is assembled with poor tolerances and has gaps and squeaks and the other one doesn't, you know, again indicative of this sort of low level of quality control that we seem to have from, you know, it reminds me of the Pimax headsets in actual fact. The two Pimax headsets that I got sent were both very, very poor. One of them bricked, trying to update itself, again this is just undeveloped or unpolished software. Um, and then I had like terrible lenses that just, they weren't clear, in fact, a bit like what the guy was saying about this uh, on the 8KX, but the 5KX was, was at, or 5K Super, whichever one it was, was actually clearer, the lenses, than what the 8KX was that I had. Um, you know, I got this horrible fish bowling effect whilst I was inside the headsets because of their ultra wide field of view. And there's people in my comments saying, oh, mine doesn't do that, Carl, and mine's really crystal clear and all that. And it, and, and, and then I had things like the speakers on them, when you're moving them to get them on your ears, they would just cut out and stuff like this, you know, and it's like, oh, it's your typical quality control issues where they're just not making sure things are top notch and just sending stuff out that shouldn't be. So this is what, this reminds me of my Pimax experience, but not as bad, you know, for me, my Pimax, the two Pimax headsets I had in, were both really bad experiences from start to finish. The software, the hardware, the lenses, the whole lot. This is still gonna be my go-to PC VR wireless headset because my one currently is working just fine. Um, but it seems a lot of other people's just don't. Oh yeah, battery life. That was, that was another one I almost missed. They boast three hours of battery life. In testing, I got between two and two and a half. I've seen multiple comments from people saying they're getting only about an hour of battery life and, and maybe up to an hour and a half, I see another guy say. And my first, my first thought there was Chinese batteries. 
because you all know, or some of you will know, you go on eBay, you go on Amazon, and let's say you order a replacement battery for your mobile phone. It's got a bigger capacity, it's a quarter of the price of a genuine Samsung one. Oh wow, yeah, I'll have one of those. We all know these days, common sense, if it seems too good to be true, it usually is. You don't get a battery that's twice the capacity for a fraction of the price. Um, and when you do get it, it's then only like a quarter of the capacity, ends up lasting two hours in your phone instead of 24 hours, and then swells up after two charges and you have to throw it in the bin because you're right, it's gonna explode. Um, you also get it with USB sticks, USB dongles. 128 gig, it arrives, 128 meg or only one gig, or something like that, and it's just like, for goodness sake. So, when I'm seeing these battery life complaints, my first thought was, are the batteries in some of these not even the right size? That's probably not the case. It's probably, again, poor quality control, and some of these batteries are coming out, you know, with dead cells, if that's even possible in a lithium-ion battery. I'm not sure whether they have cells in the traditional sense. I'm not a battery expert, by the way. But um, yeah, so is it just quality control on the batteries that they're not holding their charge, their capacity is somewhat diminished before they even come out? I don't know. But that is a long list of issues across both my comments on my previous two videos and from Amazon reviews themselves. So the warning with this video comes in the way of me saying, if you are still gonna buy one of these, buy it from Amazon because Amazon has no quibble return policy. You can get it, if you've got Amazon Prime, which a lot of us will have, you get it delivered for free and you can just return it if you have any problems. Um, you know, there'll be Amazon links in the description if you wanna take the plunge and try. Because for me, this one is excellent and I have no, there's no faults with it. Um, but you know, going through my list of comments and the Amazon reviews, clearly there's a lot of people out there that are having faults and problems. So that's my advice if you want to try one, because if you get a good one, it's a good headset. Like I, 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 This is what I use now over my Quest 2. My, my Quest 2 is being sold on. I've got two of them, one for Katie and one for me. I'm selling my one on second hand, obviously, and I'm going to be using this. And I'm almost a little hesitant to do it now because I'm like, hmm, what if my Pico develops a fault in the next couple of months? What if the battery life suddenly diminishes? What if I suddenly get dead pixels? What if it starts getting caught in a boot loop? and I can't sort it out. Do I actually now want to get rid of my Quest um, in, in case this you know, has a problem and then I have to go through trying to get a warranty um, one issue? Because I didn't buy mine from Amazon. I bought mine from System Active, which is actually where I bought my G2 from, G2 from as well. So I can't just return it as easily as perhaps you guys can if you now buy one from Amazon, which is definitely what I suggest you do because it appears there is some very much Chinese quality control issues going on here. So, enough of my waffle. That's 20 minutes of waffling about problems with the Pico 4. I still love the headset. I still use it as my daily VR driver, but that's because mine doesn't have any of the faults I mentioned. But yeah, tell me your stories in the comments if you've had problems, if you've returned them. I want this video to be like a useful resource for prospective buyers to hopefully stumble across before making the decision to buy one. And if they do, to get it from somewhere like Amazon or even a, you know, an actual storefront where you can physically hand it back and say, it doesn't work, give me a refund, or it doesn't work, give me another one to try. Um, that way you minimize the risk of being stuck with a headset that you paid money for and, and perhaps not so easy to return. Anyway, not the most positive of videos in the world, but not all videos can be. But as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.